Blessed be the name of the Lord, from this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and His glory above the heavens. Isolated in the Pacific Ocean, just north of the equator, lies the capital of the Federated States of Micronesia, the island of Panape. The mountainous island is shrouded with jungles which hold many mysterious stories of both ancient and recent history. The ancient ruins of Namadal tell us of an invincible, organized island kingdom. Deserted war machines reveal the scars left behind by a world at war. Today, Panape is a bustling hub of growing industries and a developing government. But underneath this jungle and amid the bustle, the gospel is going forth to reach every corner of this small island. Hi, my name is William Joel. I am a national missionary serving with Worldwide New Testament Baptist Missions. Uh, my salvation testimony goes back to Omena Elementary School. I was in the eighth grade when I heard about this missionary or actually uh, military wife who was conducting CEF uh, Bible Club in the school I was attending. So one day I heard good singing, I mean Christian music. First time I heard these songs coming from one of the rooms. So out of curiosity I went and when I got into the room I found all my classmates or many of my classmates sitting and singing. And as I listened and I saw the songs were on um, poster papers and they were singing the songs and they were the songs were preaching to my heart because I never heard the gospel presentation so clear. And when I heard how Jesus Christ came and John 3.16 became very clear to me for God so loved the world. And she explained how that the world consists of all uh, mankind and, and not, doesn't matter what race, what island, what country you're from, what skin color, what language you speak. God loves the world. God loves me as a sinner. And Jesus Christ came to pay for my sin with his blood. And the, the gospel was so clear. I, God began to work in my heart. And before the lady closes the service, she asked if anybody wants to accept Christ to forgive their sin, to ask Christ to save them. And I was among those who raised my hand. And the Lord uh, helped me realize that I was a sinner and I need Jesus Christ. So along with the others, I prayed a sinner's prayer. And then she asked us to look up and we looked up and she said, you know, it's not the prayer that you prayed that saved you, it's your faith. Do you really mean business? Do you really believe that Jesus Christ comes into your heart? And I, I knew that he did because I felt the load lifted off my back and a joy, overwhelming joy. I wanted to share it with somebody. I wanted to share it with, and the first person that came to my mind was my mom. So that night I called my sister who was the pastor's wife or is the pastor's wife. And we went and sat down with mom and showed her how to be saved. And, and she called upon the Lord. And when she looked up, she was smiling and she said, I've never felt so happy in my life. And, and I, now I know the Lord. And if anything should happen to me, I know I'm going to be with him. And so we shared some scriptures uh, to assure her of her salvation. And then we began to talk to members of our family. Not long after that, a group of preachers from North Carolina came at the invitation of Pastor Bill, uh, Pastor Isamo Wallace, my pastor, brother-in-law, and heading of the group was Pastor Wingard, Bill Wingard. And he came and conducted uh, one week of uh, crusade or revival at the, the same school I got saved. It's the same school that we have these meetings and nightly we have standing room only as one of the pastors would sing and his voice would uh, carry over to these villages and they would come, the villagers would come and listen. And many of them got saved. And the Lord, at the end of the meeting, the Lord spoke to my heart about surrendering my life to Christian service. So when Pastor Bill asked if anybody wanted to give a testimony, he had this portable tape recorder and he gave it to us and we spoke to it. I remember I asked the Lord or asked the people to pray for me because I wanted to serve the Lord with my life. And, First, I went to go to Bible college, but I don't have any money. My father died when I was 13, and I was a, <clears throat> uh, I just want to go and serve the Lord and, and uh, start in a Bible college. 
And he said, we're going to pray for you and I'm going to share it with the folks. And that's what he did. And the Lord helped me go to BJU and there, uh, I went there five years and then <clears throat> the Lord just worked it out, finances and everything. So after I graduated, I wanted to serve the Lord through mission. And Bill Wingard contacted me and said, we have started worldwide New Testament Baptist missions. And I asked, how can I be a missionary serving with worldwide? Uh, to make a long story, I joined, I went there and then the board members asked me all these questions. They screened me and they found that I was uh, ready to be a missionary. So I, they welcomed me aboard and I became a member of Worldwide in 1978. And I've been serving the, year, the Lord as a missionary for 36 years. God gave us unique ministry as missionaries. My wife and I went to all these different islands to serve the Lord. We, we started in Guam. And after Guam, the Lord called us to Koshrai. We were in Koshrai for one year, and the Lord opened the door on Yap. That's the Western Pacific. And while we were serving with the few trails on Yap, five years later, the Lord called us to Majuro. And right there, we uh, left and took our family to Majuro. I had three children then, and we were there, and my wife was homeschooling. And, and then a pastor from Guam, Pastor uh, John Lewis came recruiting students for his Bible Institute that just been organized from a night school and he asked me if I would like to serve there and I said to pray for me because if the, somebody take my place then I would go and and God answered that prayer and sent Helmer Lang who's now the pastor or who's been pastoring from that time and we moved to Guam in 1993 and served there in the Bible Institute and the Lord just uh, worked it out where we've been to all these islands and these students uh, from all over Micronesia came to Arvis Baptist Bible Institute and we were able to minister uh, as a teacher, Bible school teacher, Bible college teacher and work har at Harvest Baptist Church and Ministries. So the Lord used our ministries and right now I'm, I'm back or I've been back in Pone Bay since 1999 and been serving here in, on Pone Bay as uh, senior pastor. My name is Gabriel Rodriguez. I got saved under the ministries of Calvary Baptist Church at a revival. And after I got saved, the Lord uh, used some people to mentor me, Pastor Willis's son, Mr. Bruce Willis. And um, through some discipleship, I I wanted to go to a Bible school, so I went to a Bible school, and in that Bible school at Harvest Baptist Bible College, the Lord lay a burden in my heart as I look back to the people who have helped me and how they've gone out of their way to help uh, somebody like me. I have decided, I, I knew that the Lord was telling me that that's what I would want to do for the rest of my life, to be a help to others, to bring others to the Lord, just like people have done to me, how He had used some people. So I'm thankful to be serving under Pastor William Joel in Calvary and assisting him in, in, in preaching. We have many ministries here in Pone Bay, especially the uh, Calvary Christian Academy. I'm, uh, I'm the administrator and we were able to minister to all kinds of people. In fact, we have open enrollment. Right now our enrollment is 300 plus students and we're able to preach, to, uh, actually teach the Bible and uh, preach the gospel on a daily basis to Mormons, uh, Jehovah Witnesses, uh, Protestants, Assembly of God. These students are from all backgrounds and we have a very good ministry or uh, outreach. Hello, my name is Texan Amos. I'm from Pingalab, Pompey. I was born in a Protestant church, UCC, A, and now I'm a converted Baptist who's uh, working at Calvary Christian Academy. And I am also the youth director of uh, Calvary Baptist Church. I just want to say I thank Pastor Isamo Willis, who was uh, 
the one who started Calvary Baptist Church, who uh, had Ron Comfort, the evangelist, come and uh, do his uh, missions here. And that's when I accepted Jesus as, as my personal Lord and Savior in 1993. And now I'm Ever since then, I've been serving the Lord in Pompeii. Thank you. The Lord also laid upon our hearts uh, with a Christian camp because every summer we hold Christian camps and now we have seven churches and they send their young people uh, to join ours. And so we have from 100 to 200 uh, young people who attend these camps. And we found out that we cannot forever depend on these resorts to have our camp. And the Lord laid upon my heart to, to surrender my land. My father gave me a large piece of land and to me and my brother. And they agreed to uh, surrender our land for the camp ministry. And we're building a camp, Camp Rejoice. Hello, my name is Solomon David. Uh, lots of people ask me about when or where did I got saved. Uh, I got saved uh, in the one of the summer camp here actually on the small island uh, 2000 during 2000 and God called me to involve in lots of ministry actually teaching at the school CCA Christian cover Christian Academy and at the same time assistant pastor to uh, Good News Baptist Church and right now we need help financially to be able to uh, put up the buildings. We have a building now, Harvest Baptist Church sent a container of building materials. So we start, we built the first building and now we're looking to build other buildings so that we can run, we can actually operate a camp. So it's still in the future, but I believe that day is coming soon. Uh, we just need your prayer and help us uh, to reach these young people because they're the future uh, ministers and missionaries and pastors.